Hello. So let's do another example of frequency response uh, of FIR filters. In this case, we are giving a filter characterized by a given impulse response. So we have H of N equals 1 delta N plus 3 delta N minus 1 minus delta N minus 2. This is the unit delta function, the discrete time delta, well defined. If we are to plot this, we have function of n, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on and so forth. We have that at 0, we have minus 1, minus 1, so it's 1, 2, 3, at 1 we have 3, Then we have another one of minus one. Now recall that an FIR filter has a difference equation of the form B0 x of n plus B1 x of n minus one plus B2 x of n minus two plus that 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 B m x of m minus m. Or, I think of this, this is just like a dot product of two vectors, the B vector times the X signal vector for that segment. It's a series of dot products or projections. Or we can just do it in compact form, X of M, X of M minus M for K equals zero to M, right? So the first part is write the difference equation that implements this fi filter. This is easy enough, right? This is y of n equals 1 x of n plus 3 x of, uh, actually minus 1 plus 3 x of n minus 1 minus 1 x of n minus 2. Why is that? The filter coefficients, right? The filter coefficients in an FIR filter equal, equals the impulse response. Or if you think if I were to put a delta at x of n, the one that I wrote here, I will arrive at the, freak, at the impulse response that we saw before, right? So you enter a delta here. And that's the impulse response. Okay. So with this, we have this filter characterized by this difference equation or characterized by this impulse response. You see that impulse response plotted or maybe you, you see the block diagram of the filter, which gives you that implementation will be multiplied times minus one, then you delay, multiply times three, delay again, multiply times minus one, all this gets added together to the output. Whether this is implemented in a general purpose processor, <coughs> like in your computer, in a specially designed processor, like in a digital signal processor, or directly in hardware, where you have multipliers, uh, others, and the ability to delay. So this filter could be implemented in hardware, could be implemented in a general purpose processor, or could be implemented in a DSP processor. Whether you see this or this, it's useful to be able to know what is the frequency response. Is this a low pass filter? Is it a high pass filter? Is it a band pass filter? Is it a band notch filter? And that's part two, find the frequency of response. Now, this was part one, part two, frequency response. The frequency of response of any LTI system is the Fourier transform of the impulse response 
the Fourier transform may be the continuous time Fourier transform or the discrete time Fourier transform, depending if it is a continuous time system or a discrete time system, as we saw before, right? Continuous time or discrete time system. We have a discrete time system, so the transform that we use is the discrete time Fourier transform. This is not only for FIR filters, this can be applied for any filter. It's given by sum Actually, let me just once again write the continuous time Fourier transform and if it was a continuous time system, we will do H of J omega, the integral from minus infinity to infinity, X of T, E to the minus J omega T, dt, where for X, we will put the, when the input is an impulse, you pass it through the system and you get the impulse response, right? This is what we put there. So. our impulse response, the Fourier transform of the impulse response gives us the frequency response. That's if the system is continuous time. We use the continuous time Fourier transform on the impulse response. If it is discrete time, we use the discrete time Fourier transform, right? So this is the continuous time Fourier transform. And we derive this mathematically in a previous video. But right now, just to remember yourself, is any time that you have a sum in continuous time, which is an integral, becomes just a discrete sum, or a summatory, in discrete time. Of course, h of t, continuous function, t belongs to r, is going to become h of n, where n belongs to c, it's an integer, e to the minus j omega, becomes omega hat, normalized radial frequency, the digital, but has a periodicity of 2 pi, and t is always n. So this is the discrete time Fourier transform. As I mentioned numerous times throughout these videos, these are ideal spectrum analyzers, mathematical spectrum analyzers. You put a signal in, and you get the spectrum out. And if that signal is the impulse response of a system, you get the frequency response out. Okay. And you get it as a function of continuous function omega. Okay. This enables us to mathematically find the frequency of response, either in continuous time or in discrete time. Now, practically, we will compute this using the discrete Fourier transform, which is computable in a processor, through a fast algorithm known as the fast Fourier transform. So let's go ahead and do this which was the original intention of the problem. You have an impulse response, which is minus one, three, minus one. What type of filter is that? Notice this equation that we have here applies for, to all LTI systems, not only FIR. But in the case of FIR, this becomes a finite sum. to a particular number. In this case, how many coefficients we have? Starting at zero. zero so we have three, right? Zero, one, two. So this is to two. H of n, e to the minus j omega hat n. This is equal to, the first one is minus one, minus one times e to the minus j omega hat times zero plus three e to the minus j omega hat times one plus, or actually minus one, e to the minus j omega hat times two. And you could leave it here, and now you use your calculator or your MATLAB or whatever you wanna do, and you can just plot this function. Notice it's a complex value function, and so you need, to subplot, you need two subplots to be able to see what's going on. You need one for the magnitude, and that would be the magnitude response, and another one for the phase, the phase response. Now, any time that you have a symmetric uh, set of filter coefficients, like in this case, there is some algebraic manipulation that you can do 
if you want to, in order to, without having to use a calculator or a computer, etc., to get a sense of what is the frequency of response here, we can do the following. This is equal to what? One, this is equal to one, so minus one, plus three e to the minus j omega hat times one, minus one, e to the minus j omega hat times e to the minus j omega hat. Hat two, here on sodium. And this, therefore, we can use something like e to the minus j omega hat times, a, in this case, minus e to the minus j omega hat and this is going to give us the minus one, plus three, actually, and you're already going to group this together. Minus e to the minus, actually, since this is a minus, this is a plus, e to the minus j j omega hat plus 3. Let's see if this works out. So this times this gives us the minus 1. This times this gives us this part here. And this times the 3 gives us uh, the part that we have done. So this works. And the reason why this is usual is that we can see this as this is the mi minus 2 cosine of omega hat. Notice that we have a minus and minus, and that's why we have the minus cosine, right? And so this is equal to e to the minus j omega hat, and then it's 3 minus 2 cosine of omega hat. Okay? And this is going to be our magnitude. And this is going to give us the minus the phase. So we have that the phase of j omega is equal to minus omega hat. And here we're going to have the magnitude response. And the use and, and this sort of factoring out in order to put the frequency response in terms of cosines. We can do it anytime that we have symmetric filter coefficients. Now, this, if we are to, to, you can plot it as a function of omega, but we could evaluate it as a, at a couple of frequencies and see what's going on, right? So the frequencies of interest for a real signal, like in this case, the impulse response, the filter coefficients are all real numbers. We define the spectrum all from 0 to pi. This is the normalized spectrum. Or this is equivalent to fs over 2, if you put it in hertz. This is pi over 2. So just let's evaluate at these three points and see what's going on. Let's remind ourselves that this is 0 or 2 pi, this is pi, and this is pi over 2, right? And this is the cosine. So the cosine at zero is equal to one, and so we have three minus two times one, right? So we have this one at zero. At omega equals, at, at pi over two, the cosine is zero, and so this is three, actually. This is two, this is three, and a cosine equals pi, we have minus one, and so this is three min minus minus two, <clears throat> we're going to have five, so it goes up. So.
you know that this um, the frequency response looks like some sort of high pass filter. Okay, with a, with a DC value. Now we can look at that in MATLAB in just a sec. So you want to see this in MATLAB. It's so simple that I'm not going to do it. You can use the function frec c, and you enter the free, the filter coefficients minus one, three minus one, comma one, and then the number of points you want to evaluate, like two, two to the twelve, and you will see that it has a response where low frequencies still go through. And then high frequencies get amplified. Arguably, this has a, a, a high pass filter type of response. Um, but insofar as low frequencies also go through, this could be um, more like an amplifier that is frequency dependent. Let's go over the next activity. And actually, let's do it in the next video.